All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Green Monday, green every day is what I say. Every single day of the week. Absolutely. But Monday's a good place to start. Monday's a good place to start. Uh, you know, it's great to hear from uh, from our vegan and vegetarian people of faith, uh, and I'm reminded by our Buddhist sister here, of my very favorite quote from the Buddha himself, who said that eating meat extinguishes the great seed of compassion. Eating meat extinguishes the great seed of compassion. And what is more important than compassion, I ask you, I don't know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is someone about whom I'm very excited. Anne Dinsha co-authored the book Powerful Vegan Messages with her late father, H.J. Dinsha, who is widely considered the father of the modern vegan movement here in America. Uh, a professional rowing coach and seems like the girl next door who just happens to be a lifelong vegan, she and her mother Freya co-authored Apples, Bean Dip, and Carrot Cake, Kids Teach Yourselves to Cook, and as the Vice President of the American Vegan Society, a uh, publication, incidentally, for which I've written, and uh, she is the Mommy Giraffe. She is Mommy Giraffe, it's what it says here, to vegan by choice, Clint Giraffe. So ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Ann Dinsha. So although it says I'm a giraffe, we had a last minute change of plans, and I'm now a penguin because it was way too cold this morning. But if you want to know what we're coming as next year, we already have the costumes made. So this is what you wind up looking like when it's 27 degrees out and you have a four-year-old son who helps you get ready, and he says, go ahead, Mom, I'm staying home today. So he's hanging with my mom, and they're having a good time doing other things. And I get to represent, and my son is going to watch a video, and he's going to think I'm really cool, because I'm up here as a penguin. It's nice and sunny out. I'm still a little chilly. And I'm thinking about Clint. And I'm thinking that he really enjoys being vegan. And he would have loved to be here today and hang out and have a good parade. But really, being vegan is his choice now. You see, he gets it. He understands that I'm vegan, and he understands that the animals don't really have a choice in what the people are doing. We've asked him if he wants to eat the animals, and we've asked him if he understands why people do. He, he Wow, this works. Okay. <laughs> so we, we've asked him if he understands about the animals. And he really does get it. You see, each day we get to be a different animal. And some days we walk around and we oink like pigs. And we communicate to each other that way. On the rainy days, we put on our boots and we go out splashing in puddles. And we pretend we're ducks and we quack. And we have a great time. And he gets inspired because I take him to animal sanctuaries. And he actually has rubbed the bellies of pigs and seen chickens who have fun. And when I ask him why we're vegan, he says, the animals don't want us to eat them. They want to do fun things. If we eat them, they'll be dead. And then they can't do fun things. Unfortunately, in our country and now many other places around the world, eating animals and animal products is considered a sign of prosperity and success. But the environmental impact reaches really far and wide. And so they may be impacting the penguins far, far away. And I may never actually meet another penguin like myself. But we can change things here. And I really think about the words that my dad taught me long ago. He said, I can only do what I can do, but I can do it every day. And to change the culture in America, I think the world will take notice. 
Being vegan is to show compassion for all, especially those animals, but also to all the humans. It's the greatest source of happiness that we can find is to help others. A favorite quote from my father is from our book, Powerful Vegan Messages, in a chapter called Wisdom and Compassion. He said, compassion for all animals, to understand the feelings and thoughts of another, we need compassion. To adequately assess another's circumstances and be motivated to render meaningful assistance, we should attempt to walk in the shoes, hooves, paws, or fins of another, to see things from another angle or viewpoint. Today, we walk in those hooves, paws, fins of another. We walk in the shoes of the people of New York City, inviting all of them to a world of compassion. We need to make it delicious, fun, and welcoming. We need to show them the wisdom of dynamic harmlessness. Dynamic harmlessness means to do the least harm and the most good at the same time. There have been many people who have asked you to applaud the people here who are vegan. I think that's great if you're vegan. I really do. You have wonderful stories of how you came to this way of life. I'm a lifelong vegan, so I really don't have a story like you do. In fact, I applaud the people in the audience who are not vegan, because I understand that it takes a ton of courage to come to an event like this and to be open-minded. In many ways, I feel I'm much more like you. I just do what my parents did. I do what my parents taught me to do. And my dad founded the American Vegan Society in 1960. He believed in a better world. He painted a picture of that world for all of us. So if you never heard of my father, H.J. Dinshaw, I invite you to have a mentor, a resource, or a friend. Come and visit the American Vegan Society table. Learn how to use your best talents, combined with dynamic harmlessness. And remember that just like you, the animals like to do fun things. Everybody likes fun. Animals, non-human animals, we all love it. We all love it. All right, so I'm very excited about our next speaker, and she's